Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am the Dream Decipherer and I help you to crack the code of your sleep and dreams so you can sleep sound and dream deep. This evening's dream um, features camper vans and driving in the dark. So we'll jump right in and see what's going on here. The dreamer reports that they were driving from London to Cornwall, which is more or less lengthwise um, of the country, to go camping with um, the dreamer's sons. But as it was already dark, they decided to uh, stop overnight in a city nearby for the night. Then the dream continues, and the dreamer reports they were that um, it was driving at night, um, but their lights, the sat nav and the dashboard lights were all failing um, at times. So that it, there were periods where the driver was actually just driving blind in the dark. Following that, the dreamer reports that the he was sleeping on a trampoline. And when the dreamer woke up in the morning and got up from this trampoline, it was surrounded by armed police who said they were carrying out some kind of exercise. And finally, the dreamer reports that the attempted to use his telephone, um, not sure if it's landline or, or mobile phone, doesn't matter really, but it would only contact an insurance company called Direct Line. And the dreamers, uh, the computer of the dreamer's son would also only display this company's website. And the dream ends there. So you've got these four different <laughs> little vignettes, but we'll see what's going on. Um, as always, short dreams usually carry quite a lot of information. So let's see what's contained in this one. First of all, the dreamer reports driving with the dreamer's sons. Doesn't mention how many children, but just says sons. So there's at least two. Um, now, the car itself is can often represent in dreams are or meet rather our means of transportation are often represented by vehicles literally our journey through life so tons, sometimes we're on foot sometimes we're in a plane sometimes we're on a bike or in a taxi whatever the case may be but i have found for myself and clients that it often represents our journey through life so this, dr this dreamer is driving the car, which means that they are literally in the driver's seat and taking control, is expressing self-agency here, um, in the, as opposed to being chauffeur-driven or in a taxi where somebody else is doing the driving. Now, um, I would ask here if the, the dreamer if they feel that at in some areas or perhaps in all areas of their life that they are in the driver's seat and in control. And what, what does that feel like? How does that feel? Now, these sons, two or more children, uh, as I said, the number of children weren't actually specified other than to say that they were the dreamer's sons. I would put here to the dreamer that perhaps these, uh, they may be literal children, of course, but in this context, I would ask if they, the ages of those children in the dream, do they actually correspond to your children if you have children? If not, um, they could be representative of the dreamer's shadow or unacknowledged, unknown parts of the dreamer. Um, interior life. And in that sense, I would ask the dreamer if what ages were those those children um, and what in your in your life may have corresponded or happened at those ages. So there may be something there's younger selves that are, are bringing something up here. 
Um, the other thing was camping, is taking the, these children on a camping trip. And what does that represent for the dreamer, going camping, um, being nature, outdoors, um, maybe family trips? But what, what does that evoke for the dreamer, going camping? Then we get to this night driving business <laughs> and where the, the dreamer actually uses the word driving blind. And I would ask here of the dreamer, where in life, in their life do they feel that they are driving blind, that they, they just don't have any um, illumination whatsoever? Um, in one part of the dream, the first part of the dream, the dreamer reports stopping for the night because it was too dark to see. Yet in the next, <laughs> the next part of the dream, it, the dreamer is driving with a failing headlights, failing sat nav, failing, you know, um, uh, dashboard lights, which makes me tend to think he might might need a, a, a tune-up. <laughs> the spark plugs may be dirty. But nevertheless, um, despite the darkness, despite this failing equipment, the dreamer is pushing forward um, no matter what, even though that it's dark and he can't see where he's going. And I would ask the dreamer here, what exactly needs or perhaps is trying to, needs to be illuminated. Um, where is there enlightenment needed and um, a direction required or being able to see the way forward or direction to move? Um, where is that, may that be lacking in the dreamer's life? Moving on to the next section of the dream, this third section where the dreamer is sleeping on a trampoline. Now, don't know if this trampoline is, is was at this campsite. Don't know where this trampoline came from. But nevertheless, the dreamer wakes up um, after spending the night on a trampoline, which I can't imagine would be very comfortable to sleep on, but I could be wrong. But what do trampolines or could a trampoline represent here for the dreamer? Um, I mean, what comes to mind for me is bouncing up and down. Um, or, and I would, it prompted the question, what is there an area in the dreamer's life where they feel like they're being bounced up and down or back and forth in some way? Or you know, put maybe slightly differently, there's this up and down motion that you get on bouncing on a trampoline. Is there some, uh, perhaps a shifting between something higher and something lower? Um, perhaps there's something there as well. But moving on from that, as it wakes up from this night on this trampoline and is goes gets ready to get up and is surrounded by armed police, and the funnily enough, the image that popped into my mind is driving on the Salisbury Plain near Stonehenge. And if you're not careful, you can end up driving on military or police <laughs> um, target ranges. So you do have to watch where you're going. Um, and I wonder if something like that may have actually happened in waking life for the dreamer. Um, driving accidentally accidentally into one of these driving ranges that are not far from Stonehenge. But if not, <laughs> and it's possible that it, that's not the case, if not, why um, were the police there? What was their purpose? What was the dreamer doing other than sleeping on this trampoline that necessitated having armed police surround the dreamer? At another level, um, I would put to the dreamer that the police are, are a metaphor, perhaps, for um, people and situations in the dreamer's life. Uh, who, in that case, is policing the dreamer in terms of their behavior, in terms of their thoughts, etc., during their waking life? 
um, the thought phrase that popped into my head with this was morals police. There's you know people that go around pointing fingers and telling you what you can and can't do or what you should and shouldn't think, blah, 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 et cetera. And I just wonder if there may be some kind of morals police hanging around somewhere that um, may be make the, make the dreamer wake up or in, in out of their bed feeling like they're surrounded by by these hostile forces then the insurance company and that was quite, <laughs> that was quite interesting i found um the dreamer cannot disconnect from this this insurance line called direct line and there actually is an insurance company that sells various types of insurance online called Direct Line. Their, um, their uh, uh, claim to fame being that they cut out the middleman and you get the lower rates as a result for your insurance. So there's something about having a, di a direct line um, to something or someone. Though, so it could be, you know, maybe <laughs> the dreamer is watching too much TV and, and the ad comes up several times and it gets stuck in, in your memory and gets discharged at night. Or at another level, who or what is the, um, the dreamer connecting to in a direct way? For me, what came up with this was that, that there was some kind of spiritual or religious um, connotation behind this. Um, there's an old hymn that talks about, you know, um, getting on the, the, the hotline to, to, to heaven or some, uh, something along those, those lines. It's a very old hymn. Um, so, but using the medium of prayer. So prayer is the hotline to God or to spirit, or however you want to term it. So I wonder here, and I would ask the dreamer here, is there some shift perhaps, or new perspective that the dreamer is gaining with regard to spiritual matters, their spirituality, their inner life? And in, in of necessity, um, looking at direct communication with spirit, as opposed to getting it watered down and interpreted by somebody else. So those are the things that came up for me in this dream. And um, the, the, what I see as the possible connections between these different, these four sections of the dream is that, again, I feel that the dreamer may be re-examining or reconfiguring in some way their their uh, spiritual life, their spiritual journey, because we've got this ve vehicles moving around. Um, and even though they may be driving blind and driving in the dark, I mean, you have this, we walk by faith and not by sight. So you're literally driving in the dark, but there may be other ways of being able to understand um, the um, inner life or spiritual life or spiritual journey. Um, and perhaps there's some conflict there that the, you know, like what I said, the morals police, um, um, may be somehow, um, affecting the, those, those beliefs in terms of what is permissible or not permissible or what you should be thinking or doing. Um, there seems to be some kind of counterforce. The dreamer is, is feels one way about something, and there seems to be these morals police that are insisting that no, you got to do it this way because we say so. Um, it'll be interesting to to he get feedback from the dreamer on this as to is that something that's actually happening for them, and in fact. Something that occurred to me is uh, to do in future, and you might want to just put a thumbs up in the comments if you think it's a great idea, is to occasionally dip back into, into um, dreams that have been sent to me and looking at the uh, responses or reactions from the, the dreamers themselves. I mean, I've done it once or twice, but... Um, I think it's interesting to be able to see what insights dreamers may have gained 
um, from the work that we've done together. So if you like that idea, just drop a little thumbs up in the, in the comment box. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Have a great evening and rest of the week. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.